Good morning, church. All right, we are glad, excited to be together to be together today. It's my job to kind of kick off our service today as you are here uh, for a first. All right, today is our very first here from the Generation Sunday, and I'm gonna just gonna explain kind of what we're doing and why we're doing that. Um, it has nothing to do with the Super Bowl. It just happened to fall on Super Bowl Sunday. But I will tell you this, what you get to hear this morning will be far more exciting than anything you'll get to witness tonight, all right? And if you disagree with me, then we'll pray for your soul. But um, we're excited to be here. I wanna read some scripture so you understand kind of the point of what we're doing <clears throat> with Here from the Generation. Psalm 145 says this, I will exalt you, my God, the King. <clears throat> I'll praise your name forever and ever. Every day I'll praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness none can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The thought here is that one generation has the chance to commend the goodness and the greatness of God to other generations. And so as a church, sometimes we kind of forget like we have multiple generations, right? Every once in a while we're reminded of that when a baby cries and that's okay. We love babies crying here. Um, so you know, if you want, keep, keep bringing babies. All right. Keep making babies. Keep bringing babies. We are good with that here at Grace. Um, but Sometimes we kind of, you know, we put our kids in the classrooms or we send them over to the children's church or we don't know what's going on Wednesday night in youth group. And so here from the Generation Sunday is kind of a chance for us just to take a step back and actually hear from the generations. To hear the generations, not just one generation declared to the other, but all the generations declare to all the generations the goodness, the greatness, and the majesty of God. And so that's what we're going to do today, all right? We're going to start with a baby dedication here after a couple songs, and then we're going to have a little video that kind of lets you into what's going on in children's church and what they're learning. And then we got some people lined up to share today. Some of you, your dream just came true. I will not preach a long message today. All right. I knew that. I knew there'd be somebody. But that's the whole goal. And so um, we want to just celebrate our generations today. And we want to um, hear from them and learn from them. And so parents, if your kids are in here because Children's Church wasn't going on today, we've tried to break up the service so there's not too long of segments where they're having to sit where they could uh, have a meltdown. But if they do, rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made, right? Uh, I didn't get an amen on that. Some of your parents are like, yeah, bro, you, you don't even know. Yeah, all mine are teenagers, so our meltdowns are different, but I still have them. So anyway, I want to pray and we're going to start singing. We're going to start out with Jesus Loves Me. Um, our music today will just kind of be a the little uh, smorgasbord for the generations. That's a good way to put that, isn't it? A smor it's like a buffet for the generations. <laughs> Holla. All right, let me pray, and then we'll start singing. Father God, I thank you that you are worthy of our praise. I thank you that you are so amazing that we can as one generation, declare to another generation your goodness and your greatness. I thank you that there are people in this room who have been walking with you, God, for years who can tell those of us who, have, who are still in the middle or at the beginning of this journey, hey, God is good. He will not let you down. I thank you there are people in this room who are at the beginning of that journey who are just learning to walk with you and abide in you who can declare today you are good. Your works are wonderful. We know that full well. You're a glorious God. You are so worthy of our praise. And so, God, I pray today, Holy Spirit, that you'd fill this place. I pray you'd anoint the lips of those who are sharing. I pray that your blessing would just flow in this place. I pray that you would uh, take captive our minds and our thoughts and our hearts, God, that we would not um, grow weary of doing good, that uh, we would not allow our minds to still be focused on the mess of the world that we've just kind of walked out of into this place. Thank you, God, that you are greater. You are sovereign over all things, and you are provident over all things, and we trust you today. And so help us to declare your praises as one church, multiple generations, and may we leave here today encouraged to go and make disciples and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ wherever we go. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, and everybody said... Amen, amen. Would you stand as we sing Jesus Loves Me? Now, there may be a couple verses you don't know. Just follow along.
Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide, he will wash away my sin, let his little child come in, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. tells me so. Jesus loves me, he will stay close beside me all the way. Thou hast bled and died for me, I will henceforth live for thee. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so.
Jesus. You're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus. You're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus. You're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus. You're the only one that I could live for. Have a seat, church. Amen. Jesus loves me, and he's the only one we can live for, right? All right. Hey, let me read some scripture to you real quick, and we are going to, um, we just want you to know, I think sometimes um, in church, we kind of do the thing because we've always done the thing, right? So I know I'm stepping on hollow ground here, but some of our traditions actually in church are really not biblical. And so we want to make sure at Grace, the things we do are biblical, right? And so why would we do a baby dedication? Because we want to celebrate one of the most sacred jobs in the world. And we also want to celebrate um, and, and encourage and come alongside parents who are doing it. And Psalm 127 says this, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late. Uh, that's talking to parents of teenagers. <laughs> Not really, but. Toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Offspring a reward from him, like Arios. Arios. <laughs> Oreos are on my mind. It's Super Bowl day. <laughs> like Arrows. In the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Here's the reality is there is many sacred mandates given to us in Scripture. Um, and one of those, uh, not above any other, but in one of those is raising children. Um, and the reality that we want to uh, remind ourselves today as these parents dedicate their children um, is that if you're going to do it without the Lord's help, it, you're going to lose, right? Even with the Lord's help, you might feel like you're losing some days, right? But here's the reality. We believe that um, apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. And so we want to dedicate our kids to him. And we want to acknowledge that every effort we make is in him. And so just, just to kind of briefly understand, what is a baby dedication? Here at Grace... We do not dedicate babies in hopes of uh, securing their salvation. That's a choice they have to make when they are older. Parents, there is nothing you can do to make them make that choice. So let me just encourage you, if you've walked in here today and one of your kids is not choosing that path, um, you may have screwed up along the way. Actually, I guarantee you will. But here's the reality. Every person is responsible for their own choice, whether or not they put their faith in Jesus Christ. So... As we dedicate these kids, we're not, we're not like setting them on the right path so that we're guaranteeing their salvation. Really, a baby dedication is more about the parents and about you guys as a church family. So the parents are dedicating today to three things. If you know me, I have to have three things, right? They're committing to abide in Christ. If you've been around grace for any period of time, you know that that's our word here. Uh, it's a pretty good word because Jesus used it, right? And in John 15, he said... If you abide in me, if you remain in me, if you continue in me, um, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing, right? And so we're acknowledging, these parents are acknowledging as they come up here in a little bit, that um, we want to abide in Christ for the strength and the power to do it only, what we, this task that we've been called to do. They're also committing to pray for their kids. Parents, one of the greatest privileges and weapons that we have in battling for our children is prayer. Prayer changes things, right? We, we just went through a series on prayer a little bit ago. Prayer changes things. Prayer does things. Um, God hears our prayer. And just and don't miss that. If you've grown up in church and prayers become one of those things that ah, we're supposed to do it before we eat and we're supposed to do it before we go to bed. No, like we have a chance to talk to the eternal creator. The God who holds the world in his hands. And you, here in Little Cedar Springs, Rockford, Sparta, wherever you live, you can just speak, and by the power of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit living in you, you can talk to the king of the world. Why would we not? 
Parents, why would we not let God in on raising our kids? And why would we not pray scripture over them? We have so many hopes and dreams. And I'm not supposed to preach a sermon, but too bad. I got the mic. We have so many hopes and dreams for our kids. But man, as a dad, what I want is God's hopes and dreams for my kids, right? I want to pray things like taste and see that the Lord is good. I want my kids to see that. I want to pray that they would flee the evil desires of youth. I want to pray what God has said. Hey, pray this. And so these parents are committing to pray, and then they're committing to teach, right? And we acknowledge that teaching is more about what we show them than what we tell them. Quick show of hands. Any children in this room ever have their parents tell them something and you just didn't listen? Yeah, some of you are honest. Thank you, Noah. Noah's honest, right? Caleb's honest. Uh, all the adults in this room did that. They just don't want to tell you that that's what they did, right? Um, parents, you ever have that moment where I told you this a thousand times, when are you going to listen, right? Let me encourage you and all these young parents that uh, dedicate their kids today, like when we commit to teaching our children, we commit to just living out in front of them. A life that is abandoned to Jesus. Right? And that's the promise that we see in Proverbs, that when they are old, they won't depart from that. Right? And we trust God to work in our kids' lives more than we can. And then the last thing, why do we do that here in church? Because this is not just meant to be a church service. Right? If you've been around Grace for any period of time, we, we, we are a, com- a community. We're a family. Right? We, I, I just want to declare to you, we kind of reject the model that says, like, we want to get as big as we can, as fast as we can, so you can come in and head on out. Like, I'll be honest with you, I want to hug every single one of you every week when you're here. Now, some of you won't let me, Jared, wherever you're at. But we want to love each other as a family. We want to be a family. And so when these parents stand up here to dedicate, we're asking you to do something, church. We're asking you to commit to encouraging them. Some of you have been through the battle. As I look over here, I see parents who've been through the battle. I see parents who are faithful um, at at loving their kids and walking with their kids. And you know what can happen when 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 an older person can come alongside a younger person and say, hey, guess what? This too shall pass. (laughs) Right? This too shall pass. They will say mean things. You will say mean things. That's part of life. Trust in Jesus. You'll get through it. Right? So um, we are committing to pray for these parents and to encourage them and to come alongside and support them. And so that's kind of what we're doing here. And we just feel like we wanted to declare that before we did it so everyone knows what's going on. So I'm going to ask the parents who are dedicating their kids to come on up. Just come on up. I won't call you by name. But we do have a... Can you hand these out while I'm talking? Thank you. I can't do two things at once. So I'm going to ask the elders and their wives to come on up too. Parents, come on right up here. Elders and wives, would you come on up and lay your hands on these parents? We, we've had some last-minute additions, which is awesome. Where, did Rick and Ash make it? There they are. All right, come on, Ash. Hey, Rick. Okay. I'm just eldering. Nope. Josh, Josh has, has no kids up here. but um, Those of you parents who were last-minute additions will get you the stuff that everyone else is getting. Um, but, uh, we're thankful that you wanted to do this. And so I was going to go through and mention everybody's name, but as I see this big old group up here, I'm going to say, Hey, this is your job church to get to know them. Right. But we got the Rios family, the Tattenen family, the Wickstrom family, the Winalda family. Might need some baby powder. That light, that light's bright, but (laughs) I'm just kidding. Nate's been in Florida for the last week in the sun. So I'm a little jealous. Okay. Um, yeah, and then we got um, the Hickmans, the Elliots, and the Kinseys. Can you guys all just take a step forward, and then the elders will come in behind you? I know we're running out of space. One more, one more step, Nate. Right down here, right down here. Elders and wives, come along behind them and put your hands on them. Chris, come on. We believe um, in the power of prayer. We believe in the power of anointing, and I think that that that's the beauty of laying hands on people as we pray. So I want to encourage you. I'm going to pray a prayer dedication over these kids. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Nathan got soaked in uh, children's church last week with my illustration, and you still love me, don't you? That was, it was cold water, wasn't it? All right. 
So I'm going to pray. Uh, if you want to just reach out your hand as a symbol of agreement, and let's pray over the commitment these parents are making today. Father God, we call you Father because you identify to us as a parent. You are God. You are King. You are Lord. You are judge. You are ruler. But to us, Jesus taught us to call you Dad. Because you want to parent us, you want to father us, you want to mold us and teach us and love us and walk in relationship with us. And we, so we thank you for the commitment of these parents up here this morning to choose to commit to doing the most sacred responsibility in the way that you parent us with grace and with mercy, with compassion, by relying on you, Holy Spirit, abiding in you, Jesus. Um, we just pray a blessing over these parents as they seek to execute the, the plan you've given them to raise these kids in a way that might point them towards you. And God, we know that ultimately every child is responsible for their decision, but we pray that as parents we could be a visual representation of who you are. We pray that they would, would see us loving them and praying over them and instructing them in the way that we live and the things that we say. Father, I just pray against the enemy right now because we know that Satan is a jerk. He's a thief who's come to steal and kill and destroy, and he longs to destroy and wreck everything. And I pray against him right now in this moment. I pray over the lives of these children that are here that you would beckon them to come to you, that you would, God, chase them down with an overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love that pursues them to the ends of the earth. I pray for each of these kids that they would taste and see that you are good that they would understand there is no life outside of you. And I pray for each of these parents that they would rely on that power that is given through the Holy Spirit's presence in their lives each and every day to teach these kids and train them and raise them up. And Father, as a church family, we just pray that you'd help us to, to encourage those in this incredible journey, an incredible task. I pray you'd help some of the people in this room who have already walked through all this and have learned so much. I pray that they would be willing to come alongside and encourage and shepherd and just bless us as we do it. I pray for those of us in the middle of the journey like I am that we would be willing to just um, encourage young parents. And I pray, Lord, for these young parents um, that they would be willing to seek out wisdom and counsel. And so, Lord, we just give this to you. We thank you that we can do this as a church family. We thank you for all these kids. Thank you that the um, preschool room is overflowing and that children's church is getting full. We are excited about that, God. We just pray you continue to grow that and continue to help us mold and, and shape these young hearts that you have fashioned in your image. So, God, to you be all the glory. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen, amen. and amen. All right, will you give these parents a hand, guys? All right, at this time, as they head on back to their seats, we got a little video. So you may not know um, what happens in preschool ministry or children's church, but we want to give you a little bit of a glimpse into it uh, because there's some awesome things that happen. We at Grace are committed to making disciples of all generations. And so uh, let's just be honest, uh, the 40-minute message isn't always the best plan for a little child. Um, no matter how many times I try to make it work, it doesn't work with them. So we want to give you a little glimpse into what happens in kids' ministry. Um, go ahead and watch this video, and then we'll sing some more.
exist to partner with parents in the spiritual development of your kids. Everything we do on a Sunday morning is very intentional. We like to use the three words know, grow, and connect. We structure each part of our morning intentionally to meet the know, grow, and connect mission. As students arrive, we provide casual activities that they can jump into as they wait for the official kickoff. As we move into the structured part of the class, we focus on knowing and growing in Jesus. Students and visitors are welcome, birthdays are celebrated, and we worship together with a kid-friendly song, typically with lots of motion. Next, we gather together on the floor and hear from God's Word. Our teaching time is directly from the message that is being preached in the main service, a kid-friendly message. I believe it is so important for our church as a whole family to be on the same teaching page. You will never have to ask or wonder what the K-5 kids are learning. This gives fantastic opportunity to continue the conversation beyond Sunday. After the lesson, the students break into their community groups to continue to grow and also to connect. This is when students use the Abide Journal. This journal gives all students, whether they are here on a Sunday or not, the opportunity to walk with Jesus all week long. And not only that, but to do it with their family. While the journal looks a bit different, the reading plan is the same. Growing open the door for families to read God's Word together. Parents are the primary spiritual influence in their kids' lives. And the Abide Journal, combined with the Kids Abide Journal, are the perfect tool. After our community group connect time, we come back together for verse time. In K-5, we take the verse that goes with the sermon series and work on it throughout our entire series. Rather than doing one new verse each week, my hope is that students will learn a few verses completely and for the long haul, rather than many verses that they are able to spit back out for the moment but not necessarily remember over their days. A day in the life of Grace Kids K-5, a place where students are loved, and encourage, and have the opportunity to know, grow, and connect. If your K-5 grade student has yet to join us, now is the perfect time. Oh, man. Where's my man Oliver at? Yeah, dude. Me and Oliver, we're kindred spirits. That air guitar was lit, bro. He's like, I'm going to air guitar the whole time. I'm like, yes. All right. So, hey, that just gives you a glimpse into what's going on in kids' ministry. We want to thank Tara for all her work um, in helping guide and get that where it, where, where it has come to. And uh, Frank, I don't know where, I think you're in here. Thank you for that video. Frank's uh, amazing with the video. But, uh, I'm going to quit talking. I want to just encourage you with one more thing. If you're like, man, I would love to work with, with kids or with students. We would love to get you plugged in um, after a background check and some thorough investigation. I just want to clarify that. Like, um, uh, we have a pretty uh, strict policy here at Grace because we want to make sure our kids are taken care of, as we should. And so, um, But if you want to plug in, it's super easy. It's one of the f- best times you'll have working with uh, the kids and the students. So go see Tara or myself after church or any one of the pastors. We can, we can help get you plugged into that. But would you stand? We're going to continue in worship, I believe, with blessed assurance.
Sing a little louder. 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 In the presence of my enemies, sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief, sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody, sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me, sing a little louder, in the presence of my enemies, sing a little louder, Louder than the unbelief, sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody, sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me, sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. You're gonna hear. Roar up from the ashes. Hope is alive. Death is defeated. The King is alive. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Father, we're so thankful that we can raise a hallelujah to you this morning. We sing in the middle of the storm, in the middle of our pain, in the middle of our hurt. We just praise you because you are so good. We lift our voices to you this morning with all the generations that are gathered here, from the small to the more mature. Lord, we just worship you this morning and lift you up and give you all the glory and all the praise. We're so thankful that we can be here as a body of Christ to lift you up. We're thankful for other churches in the area. God, we just pray that you be with the Springs Church this morning as they declare your word and spread your good news. We pray that you will be glorified and magnified in their voices and in their message, that you may just touch each one of their hearts and just let them know how much you love them. God, we're just so thankful this morning for John and Christy Truey. Lord, as they just go and declare your message and declare your word, let the ears that hear them be open to you be open to what you have for them to hear and their hearts be open to for all of the things that you want for goodness in their life because God you are so good we pray this morning for those bringing the testimonies God just walk with them be with them just let them know that you are standing right beside them as they declare their testimony of how you are working and continue to work in, in their lives we just pray that you be with them this morning God we're so thankful for all the blessings that you've given us all the good things you do, all the just support you give us and the way you walk with us through everything. God, we just love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, worship band. Friends, come on back. If you're like, man, I can't believe a church would play a secular song. That was actually a holy rendition called Sweet Home Up in Heaven. Um, and you know, I think there's plenty of times that we can take some of the stuff the world gives us and we can sanctify it a little bit. So, all right. Oh man. And Hey, I'm glad you like the fellowship. And that brings me to my next announcement before we segment in. We're actually starting something new today. I mean, I love not launching it on here from the generation Sunday, but we would love to encourage a little bit more of fellowship at the end of the service. We love the greet time. That's awesome. Um, so you'll find... Uh, when you head out, there will be a couple fresh things of coffee and some goodies. Uh, this is our bait to get you to stick around and communicate with one another and encourage one another. Um, there will be a guard at each door. So if you take a cookie and walk out, someone will tackle you. It is football Sunday. All right. I'm just kidding. But I just want to thank our community groups as they have come together to kind of spearhead uh, as far as bringing the, bringing this, the 
treats and stuff. So if you walk out and think, what is, is that for me? Yes, it is. All right. And so go ahead and grab one or two and um, just encourage you to stick around as long as you want after service. At some point the lights go out, but that's all right. Uh, we want to encourage fellowship. We're a family and um, we want to join together. So anyway, um, I'm excited because we've got some individuals who are going to share. And I'm just going to ask if you're one of the people who I talked to, would you come on up front? There's plenty of seats here on either side of Pastor Josh. No, you're good, Josh. There's plenty of seats. They're going to come on up and we'll talk this, how that's going to work. Go ahead and have a seat. We do this thing in church where I think we mean well, but it turns into a problem when we expect that the only way we can hear from God is when somebody stands up and gives a, gives a message. And then what we mean by that is somebody who has, um, you know, spent time learning how to communicate, who is gifted by God to communicate, uh, hopefully in a passionate and a relevant way. And what we do is we begin to build church around our staff or a pastor or pastors, depending on what, our, what, what size the church and whatever our, our, our model is. But the problem with that is that... Um, Nowhere in Scripture do we read that the word that secures the victory of heaven comes from a pastor standing up front. Let me read you some Scripture. This is coming in, at the, in the middle of Revelation 12, which if you want some good reading today, start Revelation 12, verse 1. It's basically like the cosmic battle of Jesus kicking Satan's butt. But that, in the middle of that, we come to find out what happens, all right? And there may... Listen, when you read Revelation, there will be some things you don't understand. I don't get it all either. Just keep reading, right? It's God's word, right? Every time I see a beast mentioned that I could not even fathom, I'm like, God, you're so stinking amazing that you have to create things I've never even seen just to declare how holy you are, right? So there is. So I think sometimes what we do is we, we get tripped up by, oh, I don't understand that. That's okay. Not everybody does, Right? God is not understandable by you, and if he was, he'd cease to be God. So rejoice in the fact that there are some things we don't understand. But in the middle of Revelation chapter 12, in this battle where, where the drag of the serpent is defeated, this is what we read. Revelation 12, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say. Now, this always gets me excited. You know, in Scripture, you see a lot of glimpses into heaven. It's always somebody loud. How many of you are the loudest person in your family? Yeah, right? Me. Yeah. And, and how many of you have been told to be quiet more? Yeah. Not in heaven. Not in heaven. Everybody, everything's loud. I heard someone with a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. Ultimate victory has come. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him. Here it is, friends. Here's the victory. Here's the victory in the kingdom of God, the authority of the Messiah finally reigning. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The very thing that defeats our enemy is the blood of the Lamb, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ on our behalf. We firmly believe that here at Grace. If you're trying to get into heaven any other way, if you're trying to get right with God any other way, you are wasting your time. There is one man, his name was Jesus. He came, he lived a perfect life. He died on behalf of all of us. He shed his blood. He rose from the grave to prove that he was who he said he was. And he dealt a deathly blow to Satan that he can never recover from. And it's the blood of the lamb that secures our victory. But there's another component. The word of their testimony. Who's their testimony? The saints. Right? And so here's what we want to do on Here from the Generation Sunday. I've asked some individuals to come up and share a, a, an answer to this one question. Share with us a verse or some verses that God's been using in your life and tell us what he's been doing with those verses. Share what, what he's saying to you, what, what, what he's using that in your life to grow you, to challenge you, whatever it may be. And so um, the message today is going to come from us. Now here's what the Bible says should happen, like victory should be present, right? I love every one of these individuals. I love all you guys, but the, I love, sorry, I didn't mean to make it out like you're off the list, but um, if you bring me Oreos, I love you more, but I love every one of you as, in Jesus, but uh, all these individuals up here I know are growing. I know that they are practicing the discipline of abiding. I know that they are sitting in the presence of Jesus. Not, not perfectly. Nobody does it perfectly. Not even your pastors do it perfectly, at least the other two. But um, 
I'm just kidding. What I know is that these are individuals who I have seen in their life. This book, the presence of Holy Spirit through this book, change things. Right? So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to listen as they come share. And you, uh, we'll come, you guys don't have to come stand up here. There's always like a ne- another level of f- like fear when you stand up on the stage, I guess. But we'll, we'll do it from down there. But I want you, you, you to also do something. I want you to commit yourselves to praying for these individuals this week. Because something happens when you begin to declare that the word of God is true. When you begin to declare your victory. Right? And, and the, the devil, who walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour begins to try to weasel his way in. And so here's what I want you to do. These individuals have uh, selflessly, some like nervously said, I will do it. And I'm so thankful for you guys. But I want us to commit to praying for them this week. I want you to commit to praying that, that as they declare the word of their testimony, which renders Satan impotent, he has no power. Um, I want you to commit to praying for them. And I want you to commit to listening to them because Holy Spirit has something to say through them. So I'm going to come down here and give the mic up. I never told them who was going to get to go first. And so, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Do you want to? Come on, Mel. <laughs> you like how I did that, friends? Now I can't be in trouble for asking her because she volunteered. Yeah. Would you share with us? And I'm going to sit down and be quiet. Okay, thank you. Morning, church. So in my studies recently, um, I've been going through Genesis as well as our abide journal, and the Lord brought to me Genesis 1 verses 1 and 2. Um, And reading through this, a lot of us have read through this a lot of times, (laughs) and um, especially for me too, it just kind of floated over it, and I was like, oh, okay. But um, he brought some new things to light for me, and so I just wanted to share um, that with all of you. So it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now in Hebrew, the word bara means create, to create something out of nothing. And bara is a word that is used only how God creates. So God created, bara, the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and empty. And in Hebrew, the um, words for formless and empty are tohu wobohu, I think, (laughs) is how you say it. And tohu means unformed, chaotic wilderness. And wobohu is empty. And this is how God chose to start the earth. These things did not scare God, the darkness and the emptiness. It didn't scare him off at all. It's exactly where he wanted to be. And he chooses to work Um, in those places. He created everything with a purpose and a design, just like with the Israelites on their way to the promised land. They found themselves in constant wilderness. But God had placed them and positioned them in that place where he could work and move. And he does the same thing for us today, and I feel like some of us need to hear that. We don't have to stay in our own tohu, wabahu, wabohu, our own chaotic wilderness. Um, We just have to be still sometimes and open our eyes and ears for the Spirit. He is hovering over our empty waters and over every part of our lives, just waiting, waiting for that moment for us to open up to Him and to listen and to move. So just know that if you are in a current state of feeling this, that you are not alone. This is exactly where God has you, and it is only for a time. There is hope and there is freedom, but it's only found in Jesus. Please lean into him, abide in him and his word, and praise him, for he is worthy of our praise, especially in the hard times. He has overcome the darkness. Free yourselves from the grasp of the devil and this world and run to your father, who is the creator of the whole world, a world that he personally and lovingly holds in his almighty hands. All right, um, good morning. I just, uh, verse I want to share has been working in my life, and i um, been going through the whole Bible, of course, you know, and just try to sum it up in one is difficult. But um, Galatians 5.14, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And um, I think that's really difficult to do, but at the same time it's easy to do if you 
if you follow the teachings of the Bible. The more time you spend in the Bible, the easier it is to to learn what to do and how to do it. Um, some of the things that I try to remind myself of is uh, to accept people the way they are, um, understand their heart, and to care about their feelings. You know, sometimes it's it's difficult when you know, you're on your way to work and that person pulls out in front of you and they're going slow and you're going to be late to work. But it's, <laughs> you remember that God loves that person and everything that all the bad thoughts that are going through your head about them are just fainting and they shouldn't be there. And uh, just try to remember that God loves everybody and they're His children and we should all love them as well. And so that's just kind of my thing. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Not ready? Good morning. My name is Floretta, and um, I'm going to share with you my life verse today. I put it on my phone because I didn't want to mess up God's words for you today. <laughs> um, but it is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Um, the reason why I chose this verse was because trust seems to be the big thing in my life. Um, my first moment of trust was when I accepted Christ as my personal Savior, the best day of my life. I was four years old uh, when I met him and accepted him, and he became a part of my life. Um, without Jesus, I wouldn't have a story. He is the story, and he's the story in my life. <clears throat> and so I want to give you a little piece of what that journey was for me as a child and now today. Um, I remember being in middle school, standing in front of a group of classmates, standing on a stage about this height, and I was told I was about to do a trust fall. <laughs> you know, the emotions that I felt that day, I feel right now. <laughs> my hands are sweating, my knees are shaking, and the thoughts in my mind at school were, these people, half of them don't even like me. How, how can I trust them to catch me? I can't believe you're making me do this. I may not leave this building conscious. This could be bad. <laughs> well, take it from there and then come into my childhood. And as I was a four-year-old, I didn't realize that I would take the trust fall of my life. And today I'm still taking that trust fall. <laughs> it's a long road. But as a child, I stood up on that stage in front of my parents trusting them believing that they would take care of me, believing that they would feed me when I was hungry, believe them when they said they would protect me. So the moment has come, I need to trust them, and I need to fall into their arms. However, things didn't go as planned. I fell, but I was not caught. My parents' arms were not strong enough to catch me. My mom was sick, my dad was abusive, I'm trying not to cry. Um, so it was hard, and I continued to fall. And I fell through the arms of three foster parents, three sets of them. All were abusive. I continued to fall, and I thought, when is this going to end? When is this fall going to stop? Well, I fell, and I fell through the arms of my adopted parents' arms. They didn't know how to love me. I'd been through so much. I'd gone through so much pain, I didn't even know how to love myself, let alone then love me. So today I'm still doing this trust fall every day, but I'm not doing it alone. I'm doing it with Jesus. And he is the arms that have caught me, and I'm still in his arms. <laughs> so the first part, that first verse, is my childhood. The second verse is my adult life. I then came, I, I moved from New Jersey to Michigan, to begin a life here thinking, oh, I'm going to leave that all behind. I'm not going to have to carry that anymore. Things are going to be different. I'm an adult now. Well, I got married, and things didn't work out like we thought. I married a believer. I planned on no divorce. I wasn't expecting that, and suddenly things just fell apart. My husband left. I was left without a home. I had two small children, <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. But in God's word, it says to trust him. 
And when I commit my ways to him, he will direct my paths. So I did that. I trusted him, I prayed, and I committed as much as I could to him. <laughs> trust is hard. It really is hard. It's hard to trust him today standing before you and hoping that he's going to use this message to help someone here. That's hard. But he's going to do it, and I believe that. And I hope that if you are here and you have not trusted Christ as your personal Savior, I, I wish that you would. I really do because this life gets harder and harder. And without him, you can't walk it. You can't. You'll stumble. You'll fall. You may fall so low that you feel like you can't get up. But if you have Jesus, you will be able to get up because he's those strong arms that you need. Thank you. Sat on something. You want me to hold this, Ash? No. Oh, you got it. All right. Hi, my name is Ashton. Yeah, I need you to hold it. Okay. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, so that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. John three sixteen is one of my favorite verses, and one of the first verses I have ever memorized. It reminds me to spread the word of Jesus and be his greatest supporter. This shows me how much God loves us. When I am going through a tough time in my life, I repeat this verse in my head. I remember not only that God loves me, but that this verse got me through a lot and it can get me through anything else. I believe John 3.16 is one of my, the best verses I've ever memorized and I will never forget it. Ash, you did great. First time I looked at Ash, she was like, <laughs> not yet. Okay. Oh, hi. hi, I'm Jenny. When, <laughs> when, <laughs> when Pastor Kevin asked if I would share some verses, I said, um, I don't particularly care for public speaking, but faith, not fear. And as I look out on this wonderful congregation, I think I really don't care for public speaking. So please just bear with me if everyone could turn around or like eyes to Jesus. This would be really good. So I have two verses that I think of on a regular base, or basis. And the first one is also from Genesis. And it's um, from the story of creation, Genesis 1. 14 through 15, and it said, Then God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And I love um, the time of the day where it's still early morning and the world is quiet and it's still dark and I go out, I make my coffee and I go out on my deck and I live in town but I have this beautiful unimpeded view of the sky and the trees and I stand there and I'm just awestruck by the power of our creator and this beautiful, beautiful world that he's made for us and it starts my day out with a heart full of thankfulness and it makes me want to go forward and be a good steward of this beautiful creation that God's given us. Okay. One down. <laughs> Crushed it. <laughs> Thank you. So um, my other one, I uh, um, came to have a true relationship with Jesus Christ as an adult. And the path that I was walking before that is not one that I would describe as a winning streak. And when I start to feel the weight of that past, um, the weight of my own poor choices, or I feel inadequate, or that I, that I can't do it, I think of Luke 5.32, when Jesus said, I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. And to me, it's like I gave Jesus my resume. And he looked at it and he said, perfect, you're hired. 
And I said, well, what do, what do I do? And he says, just let that go and follow me. And that reminds me that even though I am a product of my past, I am not a prisoner of it. For I have been given a new life. And that gives me the courage to walk this path and to shine as brightly as I possibly can as um, a light for Jesus. Hi, I'm Eliza. Um, I also have Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. So I will read that out. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. I think this verse just inspires me to keep on moving. And like, I went through a dark time like last year. And my Nana, she brought me this verse out on a, like, it was like all pretty and it was, it was cool. <laughs> and it was just like on a piece of paper. And I, I hung it up in my room and I thought, Every time I read it, it just pushed me past the parts of my mind that were the darkest and that were the hardest, and it just gave me ability to press on and keep on moving because I knew that God was there for me, and I knew that I would be okay because I know that God loves me, and I know that he will take care of me whenever I don't know what to do. He will give me the wisdom and the courage to just keep on going and be a good light in the darkness. So. Joan was one of those I had to say, you can do this. <laughs> and we love Joan. Want me to hold this? It's not long. Yes, please. Because I can hold this. You look super skinny next to me on the video. <laughs> <laughs> Most people do, but. <laughs> okay. Um, in this life, we go through tough times, and some struggles tougher than others. When I have one of these times that I'm going through and am on my knees... I would at times have a very hard time putting my feelings into words and didn't know what to pray. Then I remember this section of scripture telling me that the Spirit of God would intercede for me. I ask him for his help, his peace comes, and I can know that God will work it out in his time and his way with my marriage and my family and whatever other struggle that I am going through. I have praised him many times for this. And it's Romans 8, 26 and 27. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And that's what I depend on. I need that. Amen. Thanks, John. Perfect. months ago I thought I knew exactly where my life was going and then through a series of very painful events I realized that I did not and I am incredibly grateful for those because of this verse I'm so sorry Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the plans I have for you this is the Lord's declaration plans for your well-being not for disaster to give you a future and a hope that was really big for me because my plans were not the correct way and Jesus's plans are far more superior and he knows what he's doing and I do not. So <laughs> I have had to really just trust him and his plan for my life and everything and so I still don't know what I'm doing but that's okay because God does. I don't know about you, but I, I th there's a lot of people in here who probably wish they had known that at 19, right? Good job, Sam. Jen, you want to close this out? Wow, that was like all so amazing. I feel blessed. Um, what would you do if you got a phone call today that said that you inherited a fortune from a complete stranger? 
With no children, a Portuguese aristocrat named Luis Carlos de Camara had a unique way of choosing who would inherit his fortune. He chose 70 strangers out of the Lisbon phone directory just 17 years before his death in 2007. The 70 strangers were notified after his death of their joint inheritance, which include a large sum of money, a 12-room downtown apartment in Lisbon, a country estate, a car, and two motorbikes for the narrow streets of Lisbon. And many of the recipients believed when they first heard about this inheritance that it was a scam. Colossians 1.12 says to give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. In Ephesians 1.11, it says in Christ that we have already obtained an inheritance. So what is our inheritance? Well, it includes salvation, right? The forgiveness of sins and eternity in, in heaven with Christ Jesus. And while that is amazing news and we are not downplaying it at, at, at all, it is even so much more than that. It is so vast. Our inheritance is access to all the resources that are necessary in Christ, not just for the life to come, but for your life right now. It is a practical salvation. And the needs that I have had, and which I have heard in many of these testimonies today, is the need to be loved, the need to be accepted, the need to have worth, and the need to have security. And I have needed all of these things as well in my own life, and have tried many ways to get that, which have never worked, except in Christ. So how do I get the inheritance? If you've met the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you already have it. You have it right now, unlimited in its fullest measure, which is beyond the cosmos. But then we hear these things, and it sounds amazing. And lately we've been talking about joy in Philippians, and that's a part of your inheritance, right? And now we're saying, well, you already have it in Christ. But then in my own life, when I leave on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, that's not what I'm experiencing. And there's this big disconnect between what I know in my head to be true and what I'm experiencing in my practical daily life. And I know it's true in my head, but maybe I have a feeling like these individuals that maybe in my life, God's inheritance is a scam. But I would never admit to that to all of you because everyone else seems to have it figured out. All the other Christians seem to know how to do this thing, and they're always up here rejoicing. But in my life, that's not how it's been going. And so out of fear and a lot of other things, maybe guilt and shame, I hide. I have some good news for you today. I have also thought that God's inheritance is a scam in my life. Not right now, but I have in the past. And if you're there today, that is totally okay. God knows that, and he's okay with that. And sometimes you just need someone to walk beside you so that you can bring some of those things into the light. Um, how do I experience that? We have to learn how to access our account in Christ Jesus and go into the throne room. But sometimes, you know what happens? Our life events, which we've heard today and our experiences, they kind of distort the way that I see God, myself, and others, and also my inheritance. So instead of me looking at Josh and seeing him clearly, it looks more like this. See? Like, I can see you, Josh, but, like, you're a little yellow, like... Like, maybe you've been in Michigan too long this winter. <laughs> right? But, yeah. but through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ can remove the film from our eyes, and you can see clearly how to access your inheritance. I've been through that process, and... Um, if you're in that place today, I would love to walk beside you, and we can access your account, your vast inheritance in Christ. And you know what? Your, your salvation is practical, and God didn't give us an inheritance. He didn't leave us one just for some day reserved in heaven for you, although that is true also, but also to access today. If you were a grandparent or whatever, if you've had a will and you're leaving something to your kids in inheritance, you wouldn't want them walking around when they have a need right? Just feeling like their roof is leaking, but they're not accessing their 10 million to, for that need. In the same way, the Father has this for you to enjoy today. So 
that's it. Thanks. All right. Well, enough has been said. Friends, I hope that you found yourself encouraged. Such so many good good words, but the, the, the moral of the story is uh, Jesus is enough, right? He's enough now. He's enough tomorrow. Um, and so I just want to encourage you as we close. Um, we tend to have this view in church that, like, there's, there's super Christians and, like, you know, how oh, those people, yeah. Well, they're super faithful. Like, they probably get up every morning at 4 o'clock and read their Bible for two hours, right? And that's why God's doing something. And I can just tell you, that's not the case, right? Um, we're all struggling. We all have blank pages in our journals. <laughs> Maybe. I do. Um, they're getting fewer and far between, but here's the reality. Nothing will change your life like just walking in relationship with Jesus. And so hopefully today you heard that. Hopefully you heard the blood, like the blood of the lamb has already been applied uh, through your faith if you put your faith in Jesus. If you haven't put your faith in Jesus, <clears throat> then let me encourage you. That doesn't make you God's enemy. The devil is God's enemy. All right? That just, that just makes you a future son or daughter, hopefully. That's what we're going to pray for. God so loved the world that he gave his son for you. There's not one person in this room who is too bad or done too much. And if you don't believe that, please come talk to us. We would love to share that with you. But then activating that, as we've heard from these individuals, from 9, 10? Yes. I, sorry. When you're my age, one year is not a big deal. 11? Sorry, Ash. That's a big deal when you're 11. When you're my age, you're fine if somebody undercuts you by a few years. But um, all the way up, Joan, we're not going to mention it. But from 11 on up, God's walking with us, right? And it's the word of that testimony. So let me encourage you. If God's working in your life, share with somebody. We've provided you with a great opportunity. There's cookies out there. You can eat a cookie and share with somebody, right? Um, the linebackers are at the door, so they'll be tackling people. Um, we're going to kind of skip that last song as we're a little bit over, and uh, that's okay. I'm going to pray. So, yeah, you can head on out, Josh, and help. Yeah. Josh's community group is going to head on out and set up the snacks. But um, real quick, I have a couple of announcements as we close this out that I just want to put on, to, uh, on your radar. Campaign Sunday update. Last week, if you were here, we took a special offering. We don't pass the plate. Hardly ever, uh, only for very rare things. And one of those things is we're, we're, since we built that building, we were committed to paying that off. Last Sunday, we raised 6400 and it's not on that sheet. Boom, right there. Thank you, Lord. Um, $6,415.61. So we, we, that, that, that's over 10% of what our mortgage was. And so, yeah, you should clap for that too. And if you're like, oh, man, I missed it, that's okay. You can drop it in that box any week, all right? So if you want to give towards that, that's awesome. But we just want to rejoice and, be, and celebrate, thank the Lord what he's doing as we're, we're marching down to pay that off. Um, our, our mortgage is now right around 47000 so we are on the way. Um, if you have signed up for choir, choir will not be starting until the first week of March. You should be getting some more info on that. It was originally intended to start this Tuesday. That is not happening. Um, so... You will have, you'll hear some more information um, coming up. And if you have not got an email yet, we're, we're hosting a quiz meet here. I believe it's that first weekend of March, and we need some help. So you should have all received an email. If not, there's some sign-ups on the back. There's a lot of other stuff going on. Take a minute and read your bulletins. Thank you, Kara, for the beautiful picture of uh, all the this, all this generations of cell phones. Um, I still remember when we found an old uh, dot, phone you had to dial like this, rotary phone. In my grandparents' house, my kids were like, what in the world is that, right? Um, but we wanted to we take the time to hear from the generations today. So I'm going to pray, and we're going to head on out. I want to encourage you, um, if you're struggling, if you want to know more about walking with Jesus, that's what we're here for, all right? And we want you to come on, uh, be part of our community groups, be part of walking with people who will walk you through life. But I hear the kids. I have worn out my welcome today, so let me pray, and then we'll send us. Father God, thank you for the word of those testimonies. Doesn't matter what age, what, how we were raised, where we're at in life, Jesus, you are the great equalizer. If any man comes to you, if any woman comes to you, if any child comes to you, they will be a new creation. 
The old has passed away. It doesn't matter what the old looks like. It doesn't matter how, how old or how young or how bad. It will pass away and the new will come. And we thank you for that truth, God, that you've made us new creatures. Help us to live this week as new creatures. Help us to live abiding in you. Help us to, like, God, if there's anyone in this room who's just is struggling to want to open your word, like, we, we just acknowledge that. You're not offended by that, God. You are, you are so okay with our struggles to follow you. you you're not, in one sense, offended or, or insecure. You're, you're good with yourself, God. And I just pray in this moment that, Holy Spirit, you would come and you would give that hunger and thirst. So for those in this room that are just struggling to just even want to walk with you, Holy Spirit, come and ignite a holy, holy desire, a holy fire in their heart, in their life for your word. For those in this room who are trying to read and trying to walk with you, but it's a struggle, Holy Spirit, come and be the comforter that you promised to be, the guider into all truth that you've promised to be, and just teach us. May we open up your word and just see amazing things about you, God. And even in those days where we, where we, are struggling to understand, may we just say, God, I don't get it, help. Thank you for being our comforter. And for those in this room, God, who have experienced that life-giving, abiding relationship, I pray that we would never take that for granted. I pray that we would never fall into a rhythm or, or a routine or a rut, God, but that we would continue to pursue you with all that we got. Lord, we love you. We thank you as one church of all generations that you've given us a chance to be here today. Thank you for this time we can have to fellowship. And God, we just pray that you would help us to go be the church, to go and make disciples, to go proclaim the good news. As many of us might spend time tonight around our friends and family at a football Super Bowl party, they may not know you, God. I pray you would give us the strength today to realize that there is so much more important than what's on that TV tonight. We're glad we can celebrate that, God. But I pray you'd give us boldness and and wisdom and, and empowerment to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And we thank you that we can celebrate that and that you are worthy. We pray all this in Jesus' name and all the generations said. Amen and amen. Friends, you are dismissed. Go and be the church.